How's it going everybody, Dato Doi here with some very exciting news for Dragon Ball Fighters. as just recently we got the full patch notes for the upcoming balance patch that affects every single character in the game as well as some system mechanics. Now right away I do want to mention that these patch notes were published in Japanese and then translated by the great Fern Man over on Twitter. Massive shout out to this guy, this is where most people in the community are getting these notes from uh, and it really could not have been done without him. So big shout out to this guy for helping us out. With that said I do want to mention because of the sheer scope of this balance patch affecting system mechanics, adding game modes, and affecting every character in the game, this video is going to be quite a long one at that, but I am going to try to shorten it down by only covering things that I think really affect the status of the game. Let's start by covering these new modes that are going to be coming additionally with this balance patch. So we have the Fighters Tenkaichi Budokai, the Christmas Capsules, and the Z Trophy Room. I've made a full video on these things in the past so I won't go too into detail and instead I'll jump right into the system mechanics. First up we have some incredibly huge changes to Super Dash, the lifeline of Dragon Ball all fighters. First off, they fixed a bug where your character's position left or right affected the trajectory of Super Dash. Initially, this one's not too important as the next two are a lot bigger than this, starting with fixing Super Dash not ending immediately when it clashes with other moves. Having this happen sometimes led to it creating this weird situation where after you clash with a Super Dash, you're not sure if it's going to continue or you'll get to act or whatever, and it just get leads to this overall feeling of the Super Dash being random. A huge example comes to us in the very next line, which is fix Super Dash's trajectory acting strange when the opponent vanishes. Vanishes. I'm sure if you play Dragon Ball Fighters, you've seen this before. Sometimes you'll click Super Dash, the opponent will vanish or either jump over you, and your Super Dash will just freak out and launch you into the sky. And while this isn't exactly super common, it also helps lend this feeling of extreme randomness to Super Dash. It doesn't list it specifically in the patch notes, but hopefully this also helps fix that Super Dash cross up situation as well. You can see that these changes to Super Dash are also making their way towards when you tag your character in under the vanish line, as it says here fix Z change trajectory becoming weird when vanished against. This is pretty much the same thing as the Super Dash line, only it would happen when your character was coming in, and then your opponent would vanish. But really though, I would say the two biggest system changes listed in these patch notes come under the guard cancel change and the Z assist change. Let's start with the guard cancel change. So now when you guard cancel, it takes smash on hit, it has increased recovery on hit, and it has increased untech time on hit. The big one you want to look out for is that it takes smash on hit. From now on, once this patch drops, you'll no longer be able to guard cancel in, hit the opponent, vanish, and then switch them out. This was huge at higher levels of play because it instantly put the game back in the person that was defending's control. And without Smash, that vanish will still be able to hit, but you'll no longer get that wall bounce which essentially takes away your ability to snap out the opponent. The Z assist change is just a big deal because now you can no longer call an assist in the same situations where you cannot Z change, examples after blocking or taking damage. So now the general idea is that if you can't switch into your character, then you can't call them out for an assist either. Again, this is a big change because in some defensive situations when you can't change out, your best option was to call in an assist to try to take the pressure off of you. So that's about it for the system changes in this patch. Now it's time to get into the character specific stuff. And like I said at the beginning of this video, if it's not too important, I'll probably either breeze past it or just not cover it as much in detail as some of the other stuff. So let's kick things off with Super Saiyan Goku who lost the head property on his 236 L and M when he's on the ground. I'm glad we get to start with this as this is a running theme throughout the patch notes. Basically having a head property on a move means that if they use a head invulnerable move like a down heavy, they will go completely through your move and blow you up. So basically this is a buff to Super Saiyan Goku as they can't just down heavy through his punch anymore, but let's be honest you're not using that move on the ground a lot, so Super Saiyan Goku is pretty much exactly the way he was before this patch. And I think the same can safely be said for Super Saiyan and Vegeta as well, who only got a little more horizontal travel distance added to his jumping down heavy. Now I'll fully admit that as somebody that isn't a Vegeta player, I know that he does have one combo where he spams his down heavy in order to carry himself over to his opponent, and I'm really interested in seeing if this extra horizontal distance messes that up or makes that easier in any way, because depending on this, this could be seen as either a light nerf or a light buff, but again, didn't really move too far. Super Saiyan Vegeta makes it out of this patch just fine. More interesting than these two characters though is Piccolo, who I would definitely say comes out of this patch a real winner. His down special got decreased startup and an increased hitbox, that move being he reaches out and grabs diagonal and up from him. His light demon elbow on the ground also wall bounces on hit now which could be huge for him allowing him to get more combos by himself without assist. It also turns this move into an actual threat which is a good thing. His jumping light and heavy demon elbow also got decreased startup and it changed the falling speed on hit. Both his 3 and 6s got an increased hitbox 
They both knock the opponent back on hit, and they also change the effect on hit, so I'm not too sure what that last part means. And the 3S alone also got decreased startup, which I assume is going to make it about equal with the 6S. Overall, it seems to me that Piccolo walked away from this patch with nothing but a couple of buffs, and some could actually be extremely good. The next two characters listed here in the patch notes are Teen Gohan and Frieza, both of which share similar qualities of not being entirely too interesting. Teen Gohan might have gotten a tad bit worse because it looks like he can't bait out a down heavy anymore, but other than that, he's still pretty much the same character. Same goes for Frieza, other than the fact they changed the effect on hit if his death saucer hits on the way back. They also gave his off the ground level 3 a bit more damage and increased startup. After those two come Ginyu who got a decreased startup on his 5LL, and in my opinion a little more interesting than that, after his 5LL, he can now cancel into S moves, which are basically his Ginyu force moves, during that combo. Not really a huge Ginyu player myself, but I can definitely see this possibly opening up some more creative stuff, but who knows, maybe they have better strings than that already. Otherwise though, otherwise though, it looks like Ginyu just walked away with a tiny buff. Up next is Trunks, who lost the head property from his 2, 3, 6, L, and H when he's on the ground. That's the move where he leaps forward with the sword and slices them up. And he also got an increase on his grab range for his level 3. Again, not really anything that's going to spring Trunks up to top tier, but decent buffs in and of themselves. The only change to sell in this patch is that the initial hitbox of his 2S, where he flies at you with key blast, got a bit larger, and it blows the opponent back on hit. Same thing for Trunks, this isn't really that big of a deal in Cell's game plan, so Cell also makes it out of this patch pretty much the same in my opinion. Android 18 got an increase in size for both her jumping barrier and her assist barrier, and now the barrier that she can do on her own can also protect Z assist that she calls in. This means that if you call in an assist and also barrier over them, they are also immune to damage, which is pretty interesting. Coming up next is Gotenks, who was the popular pick to receive a decent amount of nerfs, but he actually made it through pretty unscathed. His 2H got an increased hitbox on the bottom of the move, for anti-airing small characters like Teen Gohan and Krillin, his mouth beam got a small bug fix, and the biggest nerf he received was after his level 3, he no longer has air options until after he lands on the ground. This was actually a pretty big thing for Gotenks as he could just as he could just use his front flip key blast and go right into some good Oki. So while that is a pretty decent nerf, Gotenks got out of here pretty scot-free overall, so minor nerfs, but Gotenks is still Gotenks. Up next is the boy Krillin who actually got something pretty cool, his 214S or his Solar Flare got reduced recovery on whiff or block. Uh, this move was something that would lock Krillin in place when he did it, and then you would only get to move a decent bit after you activated it. It was still pretty powerful in block strings if you paired it up with assist, but now I'm even more interested in it as a tool for block strings. Uh, so Krillin walked out of here with a light buff as well. After Krillin is Kid Buu, who got increased startup on his Boo Ball, his 236L on the ground. That is a nerf to Kid Buu, that is a very strong move of his. Uh, that's also getting nerfed, so they're still gunning for Kid Buu out here. And his jumping 236 LM special, or the special where he supermans through the air, got increased startup if it hits on the way down, and they made it cross up after hitting less often. Overall though, I do think that 236 L nerf is going to be felt by Kid Buu fans. Normal Majin Buu got the pushback reduced on his standing medium, and the startup decreased on his standing 5 heavy. This also came at the cost of the upper hitbox being reduced. Necess I don't think this is necessarily too big of a deal for Majin Buu, uh, he didn't really get changed all too much but maybe that decreased startup on his standing heavy will affect his combos in some way. Nappa as well just got some small touches, the total duration of his Cybermen were decreased, Nappa now recovers faster from planting his light and medium Cybermen. He also got the startup of the second hit of his armor move decreased a little, just making it a little faster. Again, these are just small things, but I do think Nappa recovering faster from planting Cybermen will be a nice touch for Nappa players. And now we're on to another top tier contender, that being Android 16. So in this upcoming patch, Android 16 got his block stun decreased on his assist, which is super good for me. I always got opened up when I got hit by that move, simply because of how long it locked you down. They also made his 214S a multi-hitting move, changing up the properties of that a little. And the real big hit for him comes in the form of changing the distance of the opponent after Android 16 lands his level 3. Android 16 landing his level 3 and then going into a mix-up after that was a very big part of his game plan since the game's initial release, and it looks like that's going to be changing for him soon, depending of course on how much that distance changes, but I feel like they're mentioning it because they, they probably want to take out the cross-up is what I'm picturing in my head. And of course, if that is the case, that is a pretty sizable nerf. Up next is Yamcha and Tien, who both pretty much made it out of this patch uh, exactly the same as they were before, although the level 3 for Tien did say they altered the damage distribution of the follow-ups, so depending on what exactly that means, maybe he starts out with a little smaller damage, and then once he goes to 2 bars it increases, and 3 bars uh, extra, of course, then that increases. But really that's something we have to wait until after the patch to determine if that is a, indeed a 
nerf or a buff. But skipping over them, we have Adult Gohan, who once again is another top tier contender, uh, and this is actually pretty interesting. So his five heavy or his neutral heavy increased the pushback on block, which moves them further away from them, which moves the opponent further away from Adult Gohan. It also says removes momentum, which I assume uh, stops Gohan from sliding forward like he used to in the current version of the game we have. It also says here that his down heavy reduced the amount that Gohan moves, and then the translator puts probably doesn't rise as high. And if that's the case, I don't really see how that's too big of a deal for Adult Gohan. His level up special also got increased damage when he's charged up, and he got a small bug fix on his level 3. Overall, that 5 heavy is definitely the most interesting thing about these changes to Adult Gohan, but I will admit that I don't think any of these are going to be enough to stop Adult Gohan from doing a, from doing Adult Gohan stuff. After Adult Gohan is actually hit, who has a lot of text here that, from what I'm reading, pretty much just means that his super got changed a little, uh, maybe got a tiny bit of a hitbox increase above him, and also changed the effect on hit when he hits it jumping. But that's pretty much it for Hit. Really not too many big changes, just a lot of text talking about his one level 1 super. Differing from Hit in that regard is Goku Blue and Vegeta Blue who both got very condensed text boxes. And Goku Blue actually interested me a lot. So 214 medium and heavy, that's the Shocking God Flash command grab, now teleports before attacking. Depending on what that means, that could be a huge buff to Shocking God Flash. Unfortunately though, this is at the cost of increased startup, and those moves were already slow to begin with. If that teleport is really good, then these moves could be looking at a buff. His 236 L and M or his elbow charge also reflect Key Blast earlier now, so that's also a small buff. Vegeta Blue, much like his Super Saiyan counterpart, just got some increased horizontal movement on that jumping down heavy. And that's pretty much all. And then moving on to another big winner of this patch, which I never imagined I would say, is Beerus, who basically just got a lot faster, a lot of decreased startup on a lot of his moves, 236S, 214S, all of these things increased movement speed. He also got an added armor property on 214S, which is that reversal move, which was, prior to this, one of the worst reversal moves in the game because you could just super dash through it. Maybe this will solve that, we'll have to see after the patch, but if it does, that actually gives Beerus a real reversal, which is super cool. He also got the recovery on hit for his level 3 decreased, so Beerus walked out of this a lot faster than he was before, which is very good for Beerus. <laughs> <laughs> Goku Black got a few small changes to his supers that might actually end up being a nerf to him because his 236LM super or his Divine Lasso got some increased damage, but this comes at the cost of him losing his bomb loops most likely as it says they changed the effect on hit of his bomb loops. We don't know what that means, but I'm guessing they wanted to cut the loops. So we'll see what happens, but that's what I think is going to happen to Goku Black. Android 21 got the pushback on her standing medium decreased and also got and also got the recovery of her air level 3 decreased on hit. It also blows the opponent back on hit now. So nothing too crazy for her either. And then Bardock is another example of what happens when you have great Oki after a level 3. Bardock, 16, Gotenks all fell victim to this. Level 3, increased recovery on hit and change distance from the opponent. Basically, this is a lot of words to say, yeah, that level 3 stuff, we're gonna have to ask you to, to knock it out. Uh, Bardock, depending on how huge this is, this could be a decent hit to his popularity, as a lot of people are playing him for that great wake-up game after that level 3. That being said, though, Bardock still has a lot of great tools, so Bardock players don't really have any reason to be super afraid that he's low tier out of nowhere. After Bardock is Broly, who will now have an easier time down heavying smaller characters, and on various of his special moves, his armor will kick in a little earlier. Not huge for Broly, but definitely a nice little change. After Broly, we have a huge winner, Vegito Blue. He walks out of this patch, Vegito Blue walks out of this patch with a jump cancelable, jumping 2H. He can finally go the standard combo route with that thing. This is going to give him a little bit more damage at the cost of building a little less bar. I'm very interested in seeing what Vegito Blue players are going to come up with. And as a bonus, he also got a damage increase to his 236LM special in the air. So Vegito Blue, big winner, come on down. Zabasu Fuse cannot be said the same about though, he just got a little bit of movement speed on his standing medium, which to be fair, it's a pretty fast move already. It only got faster, very nice stuff. Base Goku got a few changes, but unfortunately, all to his Kaioken. He now has increased buffer time on the follow-ups that will make it a little easier to hit, and on his medium follow-up, or the spin, you have invulnerability during that spin, so you are now fully invulnerable during that, which is a nice change, and his Kaioken 2S and S follow-up have decreased startup, making them a little bit faster. Unfortunately, the Kaioken is not really what's holding base Goku back at this point, but it is a nice touch. Base Vegeta actually walked out with some decreased recovery on both his jumping 
Key Blast and his standing Key Blast, which is very nice. And Base Vegeta actually got the complete opposite jumping down heavy change. He decreased the recovery, decreased the active frames, and decreased horizontal movement. So they were really turning that back down. And uh, yeah, a little scary for Base Vegeta's jumping down heavy. And the last two characters aren't worth talking about since all they got were bug fixes, those two characters being 17 and cooler. So very sorry to 17 players, still going to be a bottom tier for the time being and cooler is still just cooler. So that pretty much wraps up all of the Dragon Ball Fighters patch notes. I try to cover them as efficiently and as quickly as possible and try to get to the main points of what these changes really meant for these characters. Hopefully I did a good job. Hopefully you understood it. Uh, if you didn't and want to read the patch was about me, as always, they'll be linked down below. But as you're down there, please let me know. Who do you play? Are you excited for these changes? Did they upset you? How do you think your character is going to play with these buffs and nerfs? And are you excited for the landscape of Dragon Ball Fighters after this patch? While you're down in the comments though, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if this video helped you out and make sure to share it with a friend if they want to get caught up on these patch notes. I got a few videos on your screen right now where I'm actually playing this game instead of talking about it for an hour. So if any of those videos interest you, make sure to give them a watch as well. I'm Dato Doya. I'll see you in the next video.